Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and I'm still working on this uh, Herbert Herr Cuckoo Quail Clock. The issue is, when you trip the bird, it cuckoos just fine. But when this arm raises, it starts to cuckoo, and then it quits. But if you were to push in on this arm some, it cuckoos. And so, um, it's been doing it fine for the uh, high numbers. But when you get to 1, 130, and 2, you had to pull on the weight a little bit. So, I'm trying to adjust this outer arm so it pushes in on the inner arm more so when I can raise this it cuckoos on its own but as you can see it still doesn't cuckoo just quite yet I got it adjusted so it's cuckoo, cuckooing, well it was cuckooing on the um, lower, I mean the higher numbers. Now you also have to understand that once you put the bellows on, it's going to be friction. So everything has to be adjusted just right. And there it is cuckooing just fine. But I have to uh, I have to make sure that this outer lever is being adjusted, is being tripped, so I can only go up so high with the um, the trip lever. <clears throat> and part of the reason it wasn't working right is because this lever here that goes into the count wheel on the inside of it, I told you in the other video that it was touching the third wheel warning wheel. It was still touching it, so I had to adjust slightly. So I had to take the movement out to get it away from the third wheel warning wheel. And there, it didn't want to cuckoo unless I pulled on the weight. Putting a heavier weight on it, will make it do its thing but I don't want to put a heavier weight on it I want to figure out why sometimes it's working and sometimes it isn't I've been working on this thing for some time I'm almost tempted to put my other movement in the clock which is the exact same movement so it's not going to take away 
from the value of the clock. Sorry about this, but this lever here and this lever here, which trips the cuckoo, has to be just right. It was working perfect as long as I didn't push on the cuckoo. And so I had to take the movement back out and to tighten up this screw again because it had become loose. I'm thinking about putting Loctite or super glue on that screw because it keeps coming loose. But as you can see there, it's working just fine. And there it stopped again. But Anyway, um, sometimes cuckoo clocks can be frustrating to work on like, because you have to get all these levers, all these wires in the right position for everything to work properly. And that's why a lot of clock repair folks will not work on cuckoo clocks. Um, in a sense, they are cheaply made because of the wires and how they are designed, but, and that's why it took me 20 years before I started really getting into working on them. Like I said, I started collecting clocks in 99, and I've just said this story several times, and I bought a couple cuckoo clocks in 1999, and when I went to work on them, I thought to myself, wow, these things are cheaply made, and the wires are cheap, because of the wires, the way they trip, they're cheaply made. And I, I set them to the side until just a few years ago. In 2019 <clears throat> is when I fixed my first cuckoo clock. And I've been going cuckoo for cuckoo clocks ever since. And I think I finally figured out the culprit with the count wheel off when this lever trips. You could see the lever I was talking about. Hopefully you could see it. My screwdriver is pointing at it. And when this lever raises, that tab is hitting the inside of the third wheel warning pin. 
So I still need to bend it some more away from the third wheel warning pin. And that's why sometimes it would quit cuckooing. Now I could push this this up and it still hits the third wheel warning pin, but this tab, this lever here that trips the the cuckoo doesn't raise it enough because that tab is hitting the third wheel warning lever uh, wheel. So I'm going to bend that some more. And all <clears throat> levers are required to have end shake. But when I move this, that tab that I'm talking about is hitting the third wheel warning wheel. And so it's bent way too far out of shape. So I need to fix it. And that requires me taking the, the bird out of the way the bird post out of the way and taking this nut off to take this lever out. And here I have that lever out. This is the tab that stops the third wheel warning wheel by the pin hitting it but as you can see <clears throat> this tab is not at a 90 degree it's further out so it needs to be bent in you're not going to believe what was wrong with this movement and I'm going to show you that it's working properly now as you can see it's working without any issues and I told you in an earlier video it didn't seem like the cuckoo was bouncing back good enough. And you could see even upside down, he bounces back. This bottom section here was turned the other way to where this rod was I'm sorry I got my camera on zoom from the previous section let me see if you can see it now this bottom section here was turned around to where the rod the space between the rod of the movement was greater than what it is now. It was actually sticking in or sticking out. Anyway, it was putting a bind on this cuckoo bird. It was putting a bind on the cuckoo bird. And so after I flip this around, everything works fine. And believe it or not, I got my other movement in the cleaner right now as we speak, because I was fixing to put that movement 
in this case because uh, working on this clock is preventing me from working on my clocks and as I was telling you earlier I have somebody who wants to buy this clock off of me so that's why I'm trying to get it up and running because they don't know how to work on cuckoo clocks yet so I didn't want them to have any issues whatsoever so next step is put all this back together and put it in the case and see what happens and before I get somebody, you know, one of those trolls that disagree with my YouTube videos telling me or telling y'all, no, you can't put this thing on a different way. I'm going to show you that you can. And as you can see, if I was to put the screw in here, you can put this. I'm going to go ahead and put the screw just so I could show you what it does. You know, sometimes you get working on these things and your mindset is on something. And that's what has been going on with me in this clock is my mindset was on something else and I overlooked the obvious. As you can see, it's on here. But as you can see, as I was telling you, the space, the space down here versus the space up here is a lot greater. And it was putting a bind. As you can see, the clock don't want to go back that well. It's putting a bind on this it's putting a bind on the cuckoo coming out which is why it wasn't cuckooing properly so now and as you can see the way it is it's down here in this space where i'm gonna put it flipped around like so uh, it just I really need three hands doing all this
Now the space from here to here has pretty well evened out. And so, uh, when this is tripped, it's now functioning as it should. I'm going to have to adjust the wire some to make the bird come out more, but we are wherever you want to be with this clock. Just a little FYI for you. It can't go this way. It has to be flipped around because this is touching the case. I just tried to put it in and this is touching the case. So I got to flip these levers around just like these are flipped to where the tab is in between the movement plates. As you can see, now the tabs are in between the plates and the bird goes back like he's supposed to. So, time to put the movement back in the case. Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and I'm still working on this Herbert Her Cuckoo Quail Clock. It was made in the 50s. I finally put my hearing aids in, and uh, I think I figured out what's wrong with it. you're going to be able to hear it. But I think the main gear needs a bushing. Because sometimes it goes really fast and then other times it goes really slow. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but uh, anyway, I'm tired of working on it. I have another movement that I'm going to put in it, and I know this movement works, so uh, we'll have to take a couple parts off of that movement to put on this movement, but that's what we're going to do. The lady I'm selling it to doesn't know how to repair clocks, and... Um, I only work on clocks that when I feel like it and the length of these videos is about the the time frame that I work on clocks sometimes I work on this clock for 15 minutes a day sometimes an hour a day and um, I had trouble sleeping last night because of my back and so Anyway, y'all don't need to hear all that, but um, I'll take that movement back apart a different day and uh, put a bushing in and sort it out a different day. But for now, I'm swapping out movements. It's the exact same company. It's a Herbert Her. And if, uh, if I didn't have the exact same movement, I would be repairing that clock, uh, movement, but I got the exact same movement, and so I know it will work. So I swapped out the movement in this uh, Herbert Her Cuckoo Coil Clock, and so far it's doing what it needs to do.
the uh, low note bellow is playing a little bit fast, but I'm okay with that. I'm sure she'll be okay with that. I'm going to leave it running for a couple of days, and if it does what it's supposed to do, then I'm going to uh, uh, ship it off to her. And I'm going to have to uh, retouch the wood up um, from working on the clock um, and put the uh, chain links and hooks on the chains. But like I said, it is doing what it's supposed to do. The reason why the low note lift lever is playing a little fast, the wire that catches the um, the what's considered the eight point star wheel, but it's not. It's the tabs on the great wheel on the inside of the movement. Is that wire is a little bit short, and so it. Is barely catching the uh, the wires. The high note lift lever goes down, and almost immediately the low note lift lever goes down. There is a little bit of a cuckoo, but not much. But I think she'll be happy with it. For the price that she's paying, she should be happy with it.